It's now time for news review. The daily graphic for this morning says Dagbong must succeed and need support of others, according to President Akufar after uh, that Yana paid a visit to him. And EC deepens stakeholder engagements. We'll get into that particular story. Uh, President comments daily graphic, graphic board takes office. And the back page says foreign ministry donates to schools in Yendi and government to support rebuilding of bent Accra Academy dormitories. The Guardian Times for this morning talks about um, promotes peace development in communities. President tax all traditional leaders. And U.S. lifts a visa ban on Ghana. Alleged misappropriation of funds at Ghana Health Service. Internal Audits Director dragged to Ioko and BNI. And GJA calls on police to search for Ahmed Swale killers as it marks first anniversary of his death. And the back page, Oli sparkle to beat Karela and uh, 4.3 million Ghana cities accommodation block for uh, GAF Engineers Training School commissioned. Okay, uh, the finder for today says the deadly accidents on Ghana's road 2,284 killed in 2019. It's 2.4% 2 lower than 2,341 killed in 2018, but still unacceptable. And then um, President assures Dagbon of rapid development. And NPP sets guidelines for parliamentary and presidential elections, intensify search for Ahmed Swale's killers, GJA. And finally, the daily guide for today says EC set for new voters register. And judge chases Facebook boy, US lives ban, uh, US lives Ghana visa ban, and Agojo fate hangs. The back page, uh, Javi explains Basa snap, and we must change how we run football. And uh, Captain One Golf hits Obwasi and Physiotherapy and Sports One. So uh, let's introduce our guest for this morning. To my immediate left is Abraham Malba, who is a member of the NDC's legal and communications team. And George AC is the communications director of NADMO and also uh, a member of the NPP communication team. Gentlemen, good morning and uh, thank you very much for joining good us. Good morning, good morning for having us. I'm excited the way you were able to correctly pronounce my surname, Malba. Yes. Yes. Right. Done well. Thank you. Right. Among the few who get it right. I like to pronounce people's names correctly. Yeah. Right. Great. So let's get into uh, the issues. And you know, it's the part of the journalistic ethos. Yes, you must, you yeah. must ask of yeah. people's, yeah. Uh, you know, you must ask people the pronunciation yes, of their names. So you get it. Uh, correct. You get on set. Uh, once upon a time, I had my very good friend Gideon Anaba uh, pronouncing your name. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So. Good. Then he says, oh, it's not a Maliba. Amaliba, Amaliba, yes, yes, and I said, yeah. okay, so yeah. then we'll go with it. Uh, but um, so the Daily Guy talks about EC set for new voters. Right? So I'll just do a bit and piece of it and also touch on um, the Daily Graphics way of covering it. So the Electoral Commission is on track to uh, compile a new voters register to replace the blemish fraught role. That's how the Daily Guy captured. And this came to light during the EC's engagement with some society organizations at Alisa Hotel in Accra yesterday to justify the need for the compilation ahead of the 2020 general elections. Now, the Daily Graphic says um, EC deepens engagement and story on page 13 talks about how the EC met with, uh, you know, CSO. So it says that um, the Electoral Commission yesterday began a series of engagements with uh, stakeholders to justify his decision for a new biometric voter management system and a new biometric voters register. In the first of such engagements, the EC met representatives of civil society organizations in the morning and senior editors in the evening. Uh, starting off with you, Abraham Malba. So the Electoral Commission now is engaged in I mean, uh, consultations with uh, civil society organizations, journalists, and they've been directed by the advisory committee to also meet with political parties, that's IPAC. Uh, this should come as a good news to you. Uh, as a member of the NDC, one of the groups that is uh, bent <coughs> on ensuring that we do not have a new voters register, the EC is engaging. They've talked about their plans. And uh, some of it says that it will start in April, and every polling station has 10 days to register. And uh, they're hoping that you know in 40 days uh, they will be done and everything would go on. Now that they are consulting, would the NDC, for instance, be prepared to change its stance? Or for you, it's still... And no, no, no. Let me start by saying good morning to your viewers and to my colleague, as well as you. Sure. I see what the EC doing now and trying to engage stakeholders as what should have been done 
before they came out gun blazing. I am surprised that the EC thought that they could bulldoze their way through with uh, this very important issue of uh, registering people anew and jettisoning the old register. I thought that this would have been done carefully, get a buy-in from the political parties, and don't forget that one of our criticisms of the EC has been that there hasn't been enough engagement at the IPAC level over this new register. And so what is happening now is a vindication of the NDC position that this IPAC will not listen to anybody. And we have constantly made that, that statement. In fact, our general secretary has always been on media how, uh, uh, platforms making that they statement. They brought it to IPAC. The Electoral Commission raised this at IPAC. Again, that is a fallacy. That is wrong. What they did was not to bring the issue as an agenda to the IPAC. What they did was in, 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 in person. So if you call me for an, a, a, a five-point agenda, and I finish discussing it, and then at the tail end you say, but uh, you, you know, we would uh, are in the process of uh, changing the register. That is not a discussion. Indeed. But, but, but if that's part of any other business, and they bring it up, it means they want you to discuss it. Put it in the agenda. Such an important matter of changing a register should not be, it also tells you the, 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 the competence of those people. Re changing a register should be at A or B. But subsequently, you were called to actually listen to the IT people and the vendors. Good. And that was before that there should have been an engagement. Normally, what happens is you engage the political party, even partake in the decision making as to whether we want to uh, this particular, because there will be a committee from MP, a, a representative from NDC, a representative from MPP, and all the, all the, uh, the smaller political parties would have a representation, making it three, to partake in the process of arriving at who is to be uh, selected. None of this was done. But let's get back. They are now beginning to engage and beginning to meet stakeholder groups. Yesterday, their first engagement, they came out disastrous. Don't forget that the CSOs and Block came out and condemned the attempt to change a new register. They actually asked the EC not to introduce a new register. So the first attempt to even get the buy-in of CSOs came out disastrous. But that's not all the CSOs. No, but it, <laughs> these are the people they invited. Yes. So I am saying but, but, that... But the CSOs actually held a different presser to make their point. Exactly, exactly. Yes, so After so the engagement, mm -hmm. the CSOs rejected completely the whole idea of changing the register. That, for me, indicates that the... Um, EC is not on good grounds. The next point has to do with the fact that this register that has been used just in the last three months and which the EC itself came out to say that the elections that were conducted on this biometric register was one of the best cannot be changed at this 11th hour. It is a no-no. But you see, I am gratified that there is an attempt by the advisory body to bring all the political parties together and hear from the political parties as well. But I have a challenge with the composition of the committee. Legally, legally, there's a problem with that committee. Because under the uh, uh, EC law, under the EC law, the Electoral Commission is allowed to put together a committee. And members could come from outside the Electoral Committee, ele Electoral Commission. But it must be headed by a commissioner. Mm. This, this com uh, committee 
is headed by an outsider, a Melchot. So you say the committee is I, illegal? The committee is illegal. It has no basis because it, ha, it is infringing so upon... So under the circumstances, would you be willing to engage the EC with that commission? No, that I, commission? I am just racing, teasing out. Yes, but, but the NDC, mm -hmm. as a political party, is prepared to meet the, com the committee and the other political parties. Why would you want to meet some, an, a body that is illegal in no, the laws? No, you would have to understand mm -hmm. that in the circumstance, the situation we find ourselves, where there are two schools of thought. Yes, we want to register. No, we don't want to register. This is not a time for you to be questioning an attempt to bring about a rapprochement. Why don't we do the right things once and for all? Why don't we so, start by doing the right so, things? So raise it as a party, and insist the right things As a done. party, we would respond to the committee's uh, invitation mm. and deal with the matters relating to the register. But that does not preclude us from raising issues about the committee. The next important thing is, why should it take the committee to be directing the EC to call the political parties to, the to, to, to call the political parties to, to they've such advised a to the EC. Ah, is that the wording? Yes, the uh, EC is an advised. It has been advised. Yes, by but the you committee. know, but you know that the EC is not supposed to be under the instructions of or the directions of any political party. They are party. not under the instructions. They are being advised. Uh, any, any, anybody you can refuse to take it. Take it. And you. that is why the law says that the committee should be headed by, by one of the commissioners so that if they had appended their signature, the chairman who would have been a commission member had appended his signature to that letter, then it would have had some validity. And so I think that now let's deal with the issue of trying to mediate, try to uh, uh, arbitrate. Let's deal with that matter. The NDC will respond to it. But subsequently, the issue of whether it is right for an outsider to head that committee or not, would be a matter that will be raised. Talking about that will be a matter that will be raised. So assuming you go through the whole process, I mean, there are a lot of stakeholders that will be consulted. And at the end of it all, it, it, it becomes the uh, committee and the EC says, oh, based on all the consultations, uh, majority of the stakeholders say there should be a compilation of a new register. Would you then come out to say, but this committee was actually I illegal and thus should not have engaged in that in the first place? That is a hypothetical question. And I want to even tell you that with what we are seeing, where the, the group that is asking that there shouldn't be a, a new register is gaining more grounds. Just yesterday, all uh, CSOs, some, some CSOs, all uh, C some CSOs. Wait, wait, wait. You don't uh, guide the way I'm going to speak. All CSOs invited by the EC kicked against the introduction of a new register. It's a clear indication that there is no way that you have a situation where the majority will be saying that we should introduce a new register. For now, it is those who are saying no new register who are on the front banner, who are having their legs on the paddle. And I think that the EC must listen to mm -hmm. all these groups together with the CSOs who have yesterday rejected their attempt to introduce a new register. Let me get to you, George. Um, George, so the EC has begun consultations. Um, uh, Abrams believes that, well, uh, it's going to end up in one result. The fact that majority of people would say, well, you can't have a new voters register. But of course, he's also raised legal issues against, uh, you know, the constitution of the eminent advisory committee, for instance. Uh, are you excited in the first place that AC is consulting? But do you also fear that the consultation could lead to a non-compilation of a new register, which uh, in that case would defeat the NPP's support and position on all of this? Thank you, Winston. Uh, let me say good morning to our viewers, your production crew, yourself, and Honorable uh, Amalba. Uh, I'm surprised. What is majority? A governing party is not in the majority? Is that what the Honorable Amalba is telling us? That the governing well, party doesn't have the majority of the people behind it, and so the minority now rules the majority? I don't get it. Okay, but it's good that the EC uh, is decided to uh, have broader consultation and engagement. You know, uh, we are all happy with the state of our country, the 
peace, the unity, the cohesion that uh, we have moving forward, pra uh, uh, practice this democratic uh, dispensation for 27 years and we are in the 28th year. So that's a good thing. We've changed parties in governments over and over. Uh, that is enriched our understanding of democratic engagement. And so the Electoral Commission, uh, the step it took, uh, the Honorable Abba says uh, it shouldn't have been an AOB. But what's important uh, is that the matter was on the table for discussion. And you journalists, you call something flying the kites, right? And so maybe it was a teaser on it. The way your responses at the meeting would have been would then send a signal to them that, oh, they thought it was getting a new register was a matter of course. But some people have uh, reservations about that. So let's make it a bigger, broader agenda for discussion at IPAC. That would have been, you know, maybe that was the thinking of the people. And, and going beyond that, they had brought uh, some experts to explain how the new, uh, I need a tier 2, DC, whatever, is, go is going to be uh, working. So uh, that's uh, for the minority or for the NDC's uh, issue. Uh, going forward, uh, Winston, uh, I'm happy that the special consult is it what uh, the advisory group yes the eminent, uh, advisory. eminent uh, citizens very led by the learned and respected justice and the short right mm -hmm. uh and, and his team uh, decided to come in especially uh, on the heels of the demonstrations i call it kifit exercises by the uh, minority uh, ndc uh but it's not proper as eminent advisory team to be looking on whilst a party, a major stakeholder like the NDC says, they disagree with the position the EC is taking, and then you will look away, and then when something happens, is that when you're going to come in? So it's good they took the step now, they engaged the EC to engage all stakeholders. That's a good thing. As to whether there's going to be a new register or not, let the consultations go on, and let's come to a conclusive and you offer a new voters register? Definitely. I mean, and I'm going to bring in the Supreme Court mm -hmm. here. I'm happy he's a lawyer here. You see, in the Supreme Court case, Abu Ramadan versus the Electoral Commission, the Supreme Court said they should do something. I don't know, lawyer is here, whether that is part of the ruling or is an administrative directive, okay, which I have a problem with. The Supreme Court said that they should go the EC. And then the political parties should go and expunge the names of those who use the NHIS card as a base uh, document to prove their citizens. Okay? I, Winston, I have said, I'm not a lawyer, but legally, once that is done, the register becomes null and void ab initio. But well, the names have been taken out. Thank you. I'm coming there. Okay? Now, you said that the Supreme Court, I thought the Supreme Court erred in directing the EC and the parties to do that, to expunge the names. I thought an independent audit firm should have been given that responsibility to do the work. You know what? I have spoken to one person who is part of those who are against this new register thing. Uh -huh. That when they were expunging the name, the process was so tedious that they all got tired and gave up. You know why? The process, the EC, the uh, Supreme Court had directed that before you expound my name, you should get in touch with me. So they had to make a call yeah. to Winston Amwa and tell Winston Amwa, a record show you use the NHIS as a base document to prove your citizenship identification and then uh, registered. And so uh, the rule is that that is not acceptable. We are taking your name out. There'll be opportunity for you to go and re-register with a proper uh, base document, right? Mm -hmm. That was what they were doing. And they got to 55,000 and they gave up. So and you are saying that not all those names. Not were, all names. Were if we, so and we are saying, yes, yes. And I'm telling you, we got to set up. If the EC decides it's not going to do a new rate, we'll go to Supreme Court, okay, to compel the EC to bring all the base documents. Is that a position of the NPP or that? No, 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 no. You no, want to take this yes, I will want to take the EC to courts back to give every single base document that was used to register in the 2012 election, okay? Mm. So that you tell us that there's no body with NHIS card on the register. Every single base document must be produced. 
You get it? I thought an independent, Deloitte and Touche, uh, KPMG, or uh, uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers should have been tasked with that responsibility to audit the, the, the base documents. That wasn't done, okay? But having said that, uh, the consultation should go on. We still stand by the need for us to get a new register. A new register going into the 2012. He makes the argument that the 11th hour was the EC said the 2012 biometric <laughs> registration. You know the period? The EC is using the same period for this one. To April 2012 to May 20, 43 days. They're using the same time. If it was okay and acceptable then, it wasn't the 11th hour then. Why is it 11th hour now? You get it. And again, the argument people make that, uh, you know, we use that register. Why? In the 1992, didn't we use a certain register? Why did we change it? Huh? In uh, uh, there was assembly elections after 92. Okay, we used the same register, though we have problems. Okay? After that, 2004, a new register. Why did we bring a new register? And we used this subsequently for other elections. Okay? So it, and in the Supreme Court ruling, the Supreme Court directed that the, the, the register had problems and the EC should take steps to correct them. Right? Apart from getting those NHI this thing expunged, they should, going forward, get a very reliable, dependable register. How do you do that? Okay, so uh, I think uh, the EC, uh, what it is doing now is good, engaging the people. And I'm also worried. People, I've heard some people say uh, all parties should be uh, convinced. Winston, I disagree. If Winston decides he's not going to be convinced by the reasons adduced by the Electoral Commission uh, to get a new register, can you compel him? You should be notified. They, don't, they, are, they are not under any obligation by law to convince you. But they need to notify you, engage you. And in the stakeholder engagement processes, then of course, if you get convinced, the better. If you still decide you're not going to get convinced, it doesn't mean because Abraham, Honorable Abraham Malba is not convinced there should be a new register, the EC is barred by law not to compile any new register. No. Others will be convinced. Others, once you have been engaged and you've put your arguments forward and they are satisfied that, yes, you've made a good case for uh, uh, retaining this register and they decide to go by the fine. If I decide, no, I disagree, but they say they want to change their position and go, I go to court. So you have the opportunity to go to court. Last one, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Unlike the MPP in opposition, okay, when we did let my vote count, and then we did demonstrations. There was a register, and we said there should be a new one. The EC said, no, we will use the same register. We didn't have any opportunity uh, to decide not to be on that register. Fortunately for them, the EC says, I'm going to compile a new register. They said they don't want a new register. You have the opportunity to decide to be on that register or not to be, right? The law doesn't compel anybody to be on the register. You have the opportunity to say, because I disagree with the compilation of a new register, I'm not going to register at all. Listen. Let's see. 1992, we boycotted the uh, 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 Presidential parliamentary. Parliamentary, no, yes. We boycotted it. Did Ghana grind to halt? No, we moved on. <laughs> you get it. And so that's my advice today. And the last one I was saying is that what they are doing I should give me satisfaction anyway. But what they are doing, the NDC is sending a wrong signal to their rank and file. You know why? What is the signal they are sending? You are saying new register is not good and cool. I support the NDC, hypothetical situation. I'm a low-ranked person supporting the NDC. I see my NDC always on the street saying the register is not good. You are telling me when they decide to open a new register, I shouldn't go and register. Okay. Okay. That's the signal you are sending to us. All right. I'll we, tell you a story about we, uh, no the story National Health here. Insurance. Yeah. There's no <laughs> story <laughs> <here>. <laughs> In a minute. Then, uh, you know, when we started the whole National Health Insurance, we had a story that some places, you know, they thought President Kufo was trying to uh, raise something for his benefit and go. So some people didn't register. Let but me, when the NDC mm. took over, those people, the NDC said, oh, it's good. Okay. Let's go. So let me get and they, to, the numbers increased. <laughs> let me get to your man. Uh, Winston, <laughs> briefly, yes. Briefly, the yeah. argument <laughs> for the change of the previous register to this register was because the 
old register was a manual one, and it provided opportunity for people to even vote four, five, six, seven times. Mm. Under that regime, you could go to La, vote, and proceed to Dansuma and vote. Because there was no system that could stop that to happen. And so the Thank introduction you. of this biometric Thank one you. was an improvement sure? over that one. Now tell me, I'll tell you. what is the improvement that they are introducing over you. this one? They say facial recognition technology. <laughs> and I'm surprised he's saying thank you. I see that is an improvement. Wow. There is no better way of identifying somebody than his fingerprint. It is the most accurate. Some people's fingerprint also by the nature of the work they do becomes problematic. <laughs> ah, thank you. I am saying that if you are talking so about the facial recognition would help those people no 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 you are getting it wrong Easy. you are getting it wrong Easy. we are talking about how do we eliminate people from voting more than once and between facial recognition technology and the thumbprint technology which one is superior you know that it is a thumbprint which is more superior than the facial are you saying that if they introduce the facial recognition and I, Amalba, go to my polling station, my name is there, my thumbprint cannot pick it, facial cannot also uh, be recognized because that one is not foolproof. I'm sure you heard the IT people say that one too is not foolproof. But yet my that name is there. That one has an 80 to 84% success rate. Yes. Now, if my name is there, my thumbprint cannot be uh, proven. My facial recognition is not uh, coming. I say that they will say that I shouldn't vote. That is why there is a manual record, uh, verification. Uh -huh. So it will not. <laughs> the facial uh, technology will not still stop the manual. Uh, 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 what is it? How? The manual uh, verification. verification. Okay. Because Where's you that? can't stop me having my name there. My thumbprint cannot. My facial too cannot, and you say I won't vote. Uh, that means they, have to, they still have to resort to the manual recognition. That's one point. So that defeats the argument. Mm -hmm. The second point is that this argument, this, this register, this register, is the one that has been certified by the Supreme Court. He talks about uh, the Supreme Court calling on the EC to expunge some names. Mm -hmm. The EC the actually did that. And the political party. The EC actually I think did it was that. wrong. The, 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 the EC actually expunged those names. No. So this is one Not register. All. This one register. Did the, did the, did the uh, EC come to uh, the Supreme Court and say that they, they couldn't re remove all the names? Is that what they told the Supreme Court? I said one of your people were part of the team. Do you know one of I your people? Do you know what? <laughs> do you know what one of your people have told me about you? Do you know what one of your, your people have told me about you? You go and listen to people from other uh, one of your people. You, you know, people when I was coming here, you, you, you know what they told me about you. Mister, I'll mention should, it. Should I take it? <laughs> Make sure. Not on air. So the point is that the point is that at the Supreme Court, there was no submission to the effect that, oh, we are tired. We have been removing these things. Ah, uh, now we are tired. How could that have been a possibility? It, it is it not was. because it is not one of the issues that came before the court. But the it court could have been a possibility. The, that's what I'm saying. That it has not been borne out. At the Supreme Court. Okay. That's, That's why I said I'll go the, back the, to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court, Court certified, I'll go back there. certified the register. <laughs> the man says you go back to the Supreme, yes. Supreme Court. Let me get you on, on, on his own reaction. Yes. Before yes. we move to uh, uh, one year after you. the death of Swan. You get it. No, you see, the EC is not saying they are going to uh, discard uh, uh, the finger prints. Nobody okay? said that. Nobody said say, that. No, no, you were saying one is don't, superior don't, to the don't. other. Yes. They are to be it's superior. They are to complement. No, no. Is it superior or not? You get it. No, no, no. The EC, insists, the EC insists the fingerprint is the key means of identifying anybody. Now, the facial comes in when you go there. And I, Georgia, you see, I put my fingers on and it's not picking. I've seen a professor in Cape Coast, Montessori Voting Center, eh? opposite Interbetting. Okay, professor we all know, a neighbor, UCC lecture. Four times it didn't pick. Everybody, oh, prof, everybody. Finally, getting to sex before they permitted him to manually, they did manual verification for him. Now, the alternative is, having put his fingers on, they would have then resorted to the facial vesting. 
Okay, there's a high possibility, according to them, 80% possibility that that would, you know, pick the, 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 the person. The 20% is still there. You get it? That is where I am happy with this engagement. What it means is that it will minimize the manual verification process. You get it? Which thing? They said about 0.6%. You know the figure they are quoting? Yeah, 0.6%. You know 0.6% of 50 million is 90,000. Okay? 90,000. And in a country where Professor Mills uh, defeated uh, the incumbent part, okay, by 40,000 votes. You say that is insignificant? But those okay. people would have been verified to vote manually. Is it? My, that's the problem. The manual, well, they used to verification, manual verification, no, manual verification gives room for individuals to vote multiple times. And I'm saying that manual if you will not still eliminate the manual room verification. For that. And that is what the The pressure will not still eliminate eradicate. the manual verification. You, you understand it? me? No, it will be minimized. Yes. Okay. Then you are worried about <laughs> you are worried about people being very so allow, allow the EC allow the EC we to give to. room. He says, mm. no, if you read the edits, they are saying that Look, once they have the Winston, uh, bio, this and the fascia, you know, virtually to eliminate manual mm. verification. Virtually. Listen, okay. So IT, IT experts have indicated forward. that. Yeah. I have some possible, IT things here. It is possible, tier two. It is possible to transpose to transpose the, the uh, facial verification recognition technology into this current register. They can introduce it into this current why, register. Why so, are you scared so about if, getting if, a new register? If, if your worry is... He, you says, want, he says you are scared about it. You are scared. Why are you scared? The question is, why is a political party that won elections with a register by they, they go to the market and say one million vote. The register is fraud suddenly, with problems. Suddenly afraid to put that admits that. Didn't they win Supreme by almost one million votes? What? Yes, million. so there's a grant that even two for uh, 250 million votes. Why are they now afraid it, of that it, same register? It, it must be done. Why it are they done in, well. afraid of that same okay. register? Okay. Winston, Winston yes. an ITS yes. says register. the current one is tier yeah. one, mm -hmm. something, DC data mm -hmm. center. And they are moving to tier two data center. Mm -hmm. And he gave explanations. I we have to move on. You now yes. claim that we have to move on. You now claim that you have performed very well. You now claim that you have performed very well. On, Ibrahim, when does he know you? you? The this election, the, 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 the margin will be more than the last hold on, hold on. market. Hold on, hold on. We need to move on now. Let's move on to other issues. When does he know you? They gave one million votes. Now that they know you and now you have done very well, yes. you are afraid of the register. We are not. Why? Let's move we on. And problem. so let's get to the uh, central seat spread. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Let's get to the central spread of the United States. Uh, the Ghana Journalist Association has retreated calls on uh, the Ghana Police Service to actually, you know, find the killers of Ahmed Hussein Swale. And I'll start off with you, uh, George. So it's been a year. Yesterday we yeah. marked one year. Yeah. And uh, up till now, you know, the EC had previously been in discussions with the spokesperson of Tag IP and even the family. Uh, the EC, I mean, the police had talked about how, you know, they were getting close and they've been getting close yeah. and they've been getting close. And they've never gotten close. And uh, we heard some time ago how they had picked somebody yeah. turned out not to be yeah. true. Uh, but there's a lot of pressure now building, um, you know, to the extent that uh, Prim Park, for instance, is giving them two weeks ultimatum as, as the Ghana Police Service. Let's look at first anniversary and look at the state of the investigations. One, bearing in mind how investigations of this nature sometimes could take a very long time. Would it be justified to put more pressure on the police? And two, also bear in mind that the police in itself, in many of the instances involving their own are quickly able to resolve it. Under the circumstance then, would it be fair, even on the police part, to say we're still investigating? George. Uh, Winston, uh, I think you've put the proper analogy and perspective uh, in view. Uh, when it involves the police, uh, sometimes the results are quick. And when it involves others, we've seen cases maybe uh, they've been quick. The member of parliament, you remember that uh, J.B. Adu's you know, it's only that the prosecution is still ongoing. Um, I agree, it's, it's right, the Journalist Association, uh, GJA is right to put pressure uh, on the police to try and unravel uh, the mystery in this and get the actual 
uh, culprits or perpetrators of these heinous acts uh, by ki the, the, the people who killed their investigative journalists. Uh, so far, uh, I'm not too happy. Uh, one year on, because sometimes I read some of what you just said that they are almost there, and then a case around Mamprobi, you remember that yeah, story? Yeah, turned out yeah, and yeah, yeah, okay, yes. yes. Uh, and then uh, only to hear, no, the person is gone again and all that. And you see, they actually picked the wrong person. Okay, wrong person. Yeah, they picked the wrong person. Ah, okay. And, uh, uh, you the, get it. The, you know, uh, Tiger IPI said that they've actually had an artist's impression of yeah. the one they suspect to have committed the murder okay. and handed it over to the police. And they're convinced that if the police really wants to work this out, they could get it solved. No. Uh, Adib Sani has also talked about the fact that he feels uh, that also, you know, because of the nature of the kind of investigations that were done by Tiger IPI, he feels some unseen forces, even within the police service or within society, are putting pressure on the police not to do the right thing. I don't know what you think about it. But feeling is, is one thing. <laughs> is that the issue? Uh, is there any evidence that uh, can be trailed to uh, those people that they suspect are the culprits? Uh, I think we should, as a public, uh, help the police with uh, information. The police works on info with informants, right? Mm -hmm. And then information from the public uh, to be able to unravel some of these uh, issues. So uh, I think the police should still engage or up their game by engaging uh, the public, going to the places. Uh, you, you remember they, they said, you know, some people within the Medina area saw some yes, people waiting. Them. So I'm surprised up to now we couldn't get people to uh, help trace with these artistic impression and cool. You get it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know in other jurisdictions, these things help a lot. You know, those who saw the boys waiting could describe the way they looked like, and then it can be drawn, shown, and then go pick those people and then begin to uh, carry the inv investigations on from there. But uh, uh, so far, uh, it's not too good. Uh, as to whether there are people, powerful people within who uh, orchestrated that, I, I, I don't want to believe that. Okay. I don't want to believe that. And lastly, I think the Tiger IPI itself, you know, if they've given, you know, it is an investigative body, <laughs> so uh, if they've dived deep and uh, then uh, they've gotten some people they suspect uh, to be part of the uh, gang that murdered the guys let them let them uh, give it to the police and you, with the media help push the police to pick those people and interrogate them if they interrogate them and they are convinced that they are not the people they can let them go you get it but if you don't pick them at all uh, then it's like you're trying to hide something, okay? And that will give room for people speculating that, no, somebody is behind. Once there are some artistic impressions out there given to you, the police, all you need to do is pick them, interrogate them. If you're satisfied they are not the culprits or the uh, people who committed the murder, let them go. All right. Ibrahim Malba, your take on this. I want to be blunt. You see, under this administration, media freedom is under serious threat. How? How is what we have seen? One, apart from Ameswale, we've had journalists who have complained about insecurity because of the, the work they do. We had Manasseh who had to run away <laughs> to uh, South Africa for a, a period of time. He's back now. You don't even need to run before you are back in a democracy. So that is not a good thing for you to say he's back. I'm not sure if it were you, you would say you are back. There was also, or there is also another journalist in the Upper East region, Edward Adeti. I don't know whether you are aware of him. I'm aware. Who had his uh, house vandalized and he had to also go and seek for refuge somewhere. These are not good commentary for a democracy like Ghana. And you know, as a media man, you know that your the index, eh? the press, well press freedom index. We have slammed down because of these acts, these acts I have just mentioned. So it is not just about the police, it is about the political will to stop these dastardly acts happening. Because the journalists in this country today have become an endangered species. The, your president you talked about it yesterday. And he warned all of you, if you didn't hear, I'm telling you, he warned all of you to be very circumspect. When you are invited to a program, you first have to look for your safety first, and then you can now go there. He says that you must leave.
to practice journalism. These were not the words that we knew, uh, uh, that were told in, in previous administration. So why is that under this administration, these are happening and, and people are beginning to become cautious well, about their skills. It's a principle you learn in journalism all Thank over you. the world. That you must be alive to tell the story. Thank you. <laughs> you seem not to be listening to what I'm saying. No, I'm just telling you that uh, it's a principle in journalism. Okay. Yeah, in fact, it's a principle, that yes. principle is a principle that applies to mankind. Okay. You must live, even the madman must live to become mad. So that's why he doesn't cross the road carelessly. But I'm saying that why is the story now being told this time? Why are you being reminded your journalism 101 this time? <laughs> when it wasn't, you were not reminded in uh, previous administrations. Oh, because God. this time around, the situation is chaotic. That's the message I want you to understand. So okay. if you are being reminded of journalism 101 today, there's something wrong. And I'm talking about the state of insecurity, the danger that you journalists face. I thought you'd be supporting me in this. But if you're on your own, <laughs> I'll leave you. Now, the next point is, it appears that people who are connected to government and have been fingered in this dastardly act are treated with kiss gloves. Like? People, Kedai Japan was invited by the police. Yes. Indeed, you know that this matter has attracted international attention so much that he was even stopped and detained in the US. Oh, you don't know about this one too. So, so the point is Allegedly that. Allegedly in Texas, right. So the point is that the death of Ameswale has resulted in a certain focus on the Ghanaian situation, the Ghanaian uh, government. And the commentary out there is that this government has failed to provide the necessary security that journalists need. Now, on the police, because of the fact that the people who have been mentioned and connected to this Dadali Act are government officials, it is difficult for the police to proceed as compared to other investigations that the, uh, the, the, which the, the, the which government officials? Which oh, government officials? Yeah. Why? Why? I've mentioned Kenya Japan's name. Member of Parliament. Member of Parliament. So he's not in government. <laughs> His party is not in government. His party is in government. <laughs> or oh, oh, you His are now the only. No, 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 no. So <laughs> until we How have do you say it is because of him, it is difficult for the police. <laughs> I am, I am, I am comparing. I am going to compare that to other investigations. Look, okay. in this same matter, Mugabe was invited by the CID. Do you know that Mugabe is being prosecuted? In this same matter, in this same matter, Mugabe is in circuit court. He is own. They have started hearing or the trial. Hearings for civil. So until the police gets its independence back, where there's no interference in the work of the police, as we are seeing under this administration, nothing would happen, and we are not going to get the killers of this uh, 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 murder. We have the the, the, the issue has to teachers. do with the inability of the police. The police hands are tied because of the caliber of people who have been mentioned in this matter. Yes. Uh, uh, Winston, you know, the, the man who helped the then president, John Adjikum Kufuor, to expand the frontiers of freedom and democracy and, and freedom of speech uh, by helping in the repeal of the criminal libel law, is the man who is president today. And he's doing worse. Huh? And so I don't get it. I think Manasse, Manasse is one person I like so much. We all start, I also stayed in Ketikrachi before, right? And that was where I understand he was born. Manasse must apologize to this government and the party. Okay? For what? For the militia in the heart of oh. the city deception. Okay? That is what he... You see, oh, journalists must yeah. take... Oh, look, look, look. Ah, were there no militia at that place? Well, there, 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 you see, young man, you know. Were there no militia? Were there no militia occupying that place Thank you. The NMC, that's why I'm saying well, that. Then the last one, the 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 last one we are wasting. Could it be, this state of insecurity, Ghanaians, could it be related or tied to the commentaries and, and the tape we had about my own 
chairman of Fuswam. Oh, Could it be linked? Look, because look, it's look, part look, of the look, diabolics look, that they've look, look, sat in the look, darkness see, of the room to de de see, decide to roll out to make the government unpopular. You, you Is the, it a possibility that they are behind some of these things? I leave it to the Ghanaian. It's rhetoric. Let them provide answers. It's a possibility. And the chairman is being prosecuted. I take strong exception to the comment that it is Chairman Ampofu who is behind. I say it's a possibility these, because of the audio. I think that I will advise Chairman Ampofu appropriately on you on this <laughs> program. But I think that if you have the security apparatus under your control and you have the army, BNI, everybody under your control and you fail to act appropriately to protect the citizens of this country, you now come and sit here. And be pointing and then PJB a dude died under your administration. You, you protected ashamed. him, but I am not surprised. You know, the entertainment guys, some entertainment I'm, I'm, I'm guys, were because in this country, I forgot his name. You, 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 have, you have a commander in chief okay. and they, of the Ghana oh Armed Forces who is always sleeping. So, if you have a sleeping, sleeping. president, how would you with this secured? fantastic performance? Well, how would he be secured? Well, thank you very much. How would he be secured with a uh, sleeping president? The national security and all are on top of Your national security has been exposed by a lady. Your national security has been exposed. Hold on, hold on. about national security. Our time is up. So, I shouldn't say the national security has been exposed. Our time is up. No. The pajamas. I am I am wrapping up. Our time is up. One person. Pajamas, national security. Hold on, one person would speak. Our time is up. Thank you very much, Ibrahim Malba. And who is a member of the NDC's communication and legal team. And thank you also, George A.C., who is Communications Director of the National Disaster Management Organization and a member of the NPP's communication team.